Summer is approaching fast. That means everybody has a fitness goal. Now, here's the deal. We wanted to do an episode about how to get in the best shape by summer. Shredded. But uh, there's a lot of people with different goals, different starting positions. And here's the real challenge. The real challenge is the plan. What is the plan from now till then to get the best possible body? Because without a plan, it's just not going to happen. It can happen, but take a lot longer. You're looking to do this by summer. So in today's episode, that's what we're going to do. We're going to break it down for you. And we're going to talk about the three most common types of people who are trying to get fit by summer. Who are those? That's the beginner. Who's Be- beginner. For the, for the first time. Yeah. Or, and okay, let's be clear here though too. A beginner, I would I would put in this category, not only this is your first time really getting after it, but also this is your first time in a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you could be somebody who's been in and out of the gym for 10 years. Uh, but you haven't worked out for like a year yeah. or two. Yeah, but you haven't you Took haven't worked out off. for like a year and you're ready to get back into the swing of things. I would still put you in the beginner, even if you're not considered a a beginner in terms of you know lifting, you know you're familiar with the lifts. I think that you should still progress as if you're because and by the way, th- that's not like a a knock or a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. Like there's there's this thing that happens to a lot of you know, uh, quote unquote, advanced lifters or people that have been lifting for most of their life that have taken a year, two years off, and then they want to go right back into like no. training volume compared to what they were they were doing when they fell off. And it's like, no, instead, lift like you're a beginner, get all those newbie gains again, like because it is like being new all over again, even though you may have had experience in the gym and follow that kind of a protocol before you progress to the more advanced. Type yeah. Of so people kind of just getting started or who haven't been working out for a while or just not familiar um, with, uh, you know, different exercises and how they work. Um, then the other two most common goals are I want to build lots of muscle or I want to burn lots of body fat. I want to get rid of lots of body fat that covers pretty much everybody, right? Of course, within those are things that are much more specific, but that does cover every, uh, for the most part, everybody. And depending on where you fall, that's, uh, what'll help dictate the plan because here's why people, don't get results uh, for the most part. Why people don't get results as uh, satisfactory as they want or as fast as they want. Now, I don't like to say as fast because sometimes people's goals are unrealistic. Like, mm-hmm. I want to lose 40 pounds and look shredded by next month. Like, okay, that's, that's not going to happen. But uh, even with realistic goals, <clears throat> oftentimes things don't happen fast enough because people don't really have a plan. And not just a plan like, I'm going to go to the gym three days a week and I'm going to try and eat better. Like that's kind of part of the plan, but I mean a real plan. Like here's how I'm going to work out uh, the next few weeks and then the weeks after that and then the weeks after that. Here's what my diet's going to look like now. Here's how it's going to progress and here's how it's going to change. Here's what I should expect uh, at this stage, at that stage. Here's when I do these exercises yeah. and those exercises. So it's methodical. It's not just like it's super impulsive where it's like, oh no, I got to make up for all this time that I haven't been putting in the gym and I can get it all together in a really short amount of time. Yes. You, know what, you know what's funny about what you're saying though? In a in a small snapshot of let's say only four weeks, you're right. It's not the fastest way necessarily per se to, to maybe see, so for someone to see the results that they're looking for. But over the course of three, six, and nine months, it is the fastest oh, yeah. way. And I think that's what why people get so hung up is they get this like, oh, I need to lose this much weight or I want to look a certain way and I want to get it as fast as I possibly can. But the fastest way to get there is is technically kind of the slower way at first because mm-hmm. the, the results ramp up on the back end when you do things correctly. When you jump out the gates and you throw the whole kitchen sink at your body, you may get the initial first two to three weeks faster results than the person that's slowly building the correct the correct well, way. You see that with the weight loss for sure, right? Right. But then the, they're not accounting for like maintaining that muscle mass. So they don't get the definition. They don't get all these other attributes they're going for. You know, this reminds me of you guys ever go to Universal Studio and um, there's, there's a great theme park in California, and there are these places where they would film movies and they're fake towns. Yeah. So it's like, it looks like you're in a Western, you know, uh, like you're, you're in the 17 to 1800s uh, in the like West. Boomtown. Yeah, like a boomtown, yeah. right? But from a distance, 
it looks like a salon, a saloon. It looks like a bar. It looks like, a, but then you walk up and you tell it's fake. Like, oh, yeah. I can like push this over with my hand, and these windows aren't real, yes, and nobody's inside. Right. Yeah. So, could you build a fake ho- a house that looks like it's moving faster than than a real mm-hmm. house? I mean, from a distance, I guess you could, but it's not really a house. It'll topple over. So, to do this the right way, there's only one way to do that, and the right way gets you uh, better results and faster results in terms of getting closer to the ultimate goal. Because you could lose that initial five pounds really quick by simply moving more and, and eating less. But if your goal is 15, 20 pounds, like it ain't, and, and pure body fat, it ain't going to happen without a plan. You need to have a specific plan. And yes, exercise and eating differently are part of it. But what makes up those things and what's right for you are really what dictate just how effective it is. And the biggest mistake people have is they don't, think that far ahead, either because they don't know, because they think that, and this is a common thought, a common thought is the value of exercise is just movement. So it really doesn't matter what I do to, 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 the, to, to a large extent. It's just like, am I moving? That's great. So there it is. And oh, with food, it doesn't really matter too much. So long as I eat foods that are somewhat, you know, quote unquote healthy, whatever that means, and I eat less, and then I'll get there. Um, no, that's a tiny piece of the the pie, but really it's, there, there's, there's much more that goes into it. How you exercise, the exercise you do, the order that you do them, are they appropriate to you when you apply them? And then with food, there's a way to eat, to speed up the metabolism, to burn body fat, to build muscle. And there's a big way to do it best for your body. Um, and you combine those things in the right order for yourself, your body's going to progress and it's going to progress in a way that's fast and feels more effortless than hitting your head against the wall with without a plan. Okay, so what does that look like specifically for the beginner? I mean, obviously the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, addressing any posture, correctional stuff to so that it sets yourself up for one, not having any potential injury, also two, getting the most out of the lifts that you're going to be going into. I think of that. I also think of uh exercises that are either body weight or little, you know, little movement. Like I love like the stability ball type stuff where I'm working on not only posture with someone like that, a little bit of instability, um, some dumbbell work. Like what, what does some of the programming look like for this person? Yeah. So, uh, the two things you want to, well, there's a few things that you really want to consider, um, when you're a beginner. One is, uh, understand that exercise really is just the stimulus that tells your body to change and Mm -hmm. adapt. And the stimulus, how you know it's appropriate, is based off of um, where you're at now. Mm -hmm. And a beginner doesn't need much stimulus to cause the body to move in the right direction. But there's more to that. It's not just that it doesn't need much. More than what it needs actually becomes too much Mm -hmm. and overcomes your body's ability to change and adapt. So this is not a case where if some is good, more is better. There's if some is right, more is not right. And it'll actually get you there much slower. So you got to have the right dose, I would say, that is the, one of the strongest things to consider. Yeah, I still think this is a major consideration because there seems to be this thought that um, you have to be able to accomplish a certain amount of exercises or this kind of more intensified workout for it to be any kind of value for you to even step into the gym and for you to even start this embark on this journey at all Uh, for your average person. I feel like that thought is just still out there when in fact, it's really just, it's such an individualized experience. If you can understand how to really like, you know, peer into what your body's telling you and, and, you know, in terms of like the overall (laughs) intensity, adjusting it accordingly. So you kind of lean a little bit more on less. So you're planning on coming back as opposed to, you know, taking it all at once. What's up, everybody? Ooh, special episode. This is to help you get ready for the summer. Let me tell you what's going on first, then I'll tell you what the giveaway is because I am going to give away something pretty awesome. Here's what we got going on. We created, specially for this episode, three workout program bundles. Each one has programs that are combined and eBooks combined for specific goals. Here's what they are. We have the Summer Starter Bundle. This is for beginners. We have the Summer Shred Bundle. This is for those of you that want to get cut and lean. And then we have the Summer Strong Bundle. Those are for those of you that want to build muscle and strength. All of them discounted heavily, okay? Heavily. So if you're interested in checking them out, go to mapsapril.com. All right, so here's the giveaway. 
If you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, and we choose you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section, and you can pick one of those bundles for free. So whichever one of those bundles you want, if you win, you let us know in the comment section if you are the winner, and we'll give it to you. All right, here comes the show. So what comes to mind for me is I think, you know, hopefully Andrew can have the team shoot up some clips and videos from like some of our different programs to give an example. So the, the listener or viewer can get some visuals what that looks like. But it, for me, it looks like a map starter maps 15 S type of programming with the combination of maps prime as far as the the priming and posture stuff like focus on that going in yeah so let's talk uh, again you mentioned posture uh, to be more specific it's uh, more like what, what would be referred to as a correctional exercise make no mistake by the way correctional exercise is still it builds exercise. muscle yeah, yeah you're, you're still working out yeah the difference is correctional exercise is setting your body up to be able to later do uh, the, some of the most effective exercises you're able to do. So if you take a beginner or you haven't worked out for a while, just putting them under, like if you've listened to the show before, you know that, you know, we like barbell squats, for example, or barbell mm -hmm. deadlifts, great exercises, very effective at building muscle and speeding up the metabolism and setting you up for fat loss and all that stuff, very functional. But if you haven't done them in a while or never, putting you under a bar and, have, and expecting you to do a barbell squat you're not going to derive any value, number one, because you don't have the skill of it. Um, and you don't have, you probably aren't going to have not just not the technique, but the stability to do so. And you'll probably hurt yourself. Yeah. So you're, 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 so there are prerequisite exercises and things you can do to set yourself up so that you can do that exercise. Just, so Yeah, just to reinforce everything, really, just to make sure everything's operating properly. You're able to get into these positions and hold and sustain those positions, which a lot of times people don't realize, like I'm even just in a split stance, it's hard for me to like maintain balance. You know, right there, that's an issue. Like we have to work on that. We have to get you grounded. We have to get you to be able to control your body at the level. Now we can add load and you're going to see a lot more substantial results once you're able to control yourself. Like yeah. And I do want to say this again, because sometimes people skip this, but try to skip this part because they think, oh, this isn't the fat loss part or this isn't the muscle building part. No, no, no. You, you burn body fat and build muscle doing this as well. There's just an order, uh, an order of operation. And you really want to uh, be able to stabilize your body and at least build enough strength uh, in your body to support yourself to do more of the traditional exercises. But there's still exercises and you're still working out. Yep. You mentioned MAPS 15, Adam. The, what I like so much about a program like that, so for people who aren't familiar Rather than having someone, like for example, in the past, if I trained a beginner, I would have them meet me two days a week and we would do about a 45 to 55 minute workout. Okay. So, and that's usually where I would start most people. More than that would not only not be necessary, but it would probably be too much. Again, we're talking about strength training here. So what we did with MAPS 15 is we created a program where instead of doing two 45 to 55 minute workouts, you're doing 15 minutes every single day. The reason why that's so great for a lot of people, but especially beginners, is because it's hard to develop. One of the challenges with getting started with any kind of workout program is just maintaining this new routine and structure. Like you weren't doing two one-hour workouts a week before. Now you're starting to do them, and it's a new thing in your life, and you got to make time for it. And then, okay, now I got to be consistent uh, through all of life's challenges. What we found as trainers, uh, when we trained people for a long time, was it was easier for people to do a little bit every day versus a lot sometimes. So instead of doing two one-hour workouts, they just did 15 minutes on a daily basis. So that is a great approach for new people. When somebody's brand new, like when I talk to a family member, in fact, my aunt is about to start strength training. She's like, I've never done it before. What should I do? Should I go two days a week and you know do 45 minutes to an hour? So no, no, I want you to do 15 minutes every single day. She's like, what? And I said, yeah, just do She's like, well, that's actually easier. I can squeeze it in. I do it every single day, develops habits faster. I said, absolutely. That's, that's, that's the point. So that's a very uh, important thing to consider. Um, you also, Adam, mentioned the stability ball. You know, the stability ball entered into the fitness space and became quite popular and got abused for a while where everybody was doing everything on a stability ball. And so then we moved away from it. But the real value of stability ball training, that's the big you know, looks like a big uh, inflatable ball, right? 
the value of it is when you sit on it or use it for exercises, because it's not a chair or a bench, it requires you to maintain Good stability posture. with your body and posture. Mm -hmm. And you want that. You want to learn how to do that as a beginner because there's lots of exercises that require that. If you do yeah. overhead exercises or rows or whatever, and you don't haven't learned yet how to really stabilize your body, this is where lower back injuries can happen or just, you know, bad technique. So stability ball exercises are excellent, excellent for uh, beginners. One of my favorite, favorite mm -hmm. uses for it. Yeah. I want to add to the, your point about mass 15 too. I mean, this is how um, I just started. So, and I wasn't c completely off either. It was just, I wasn't very consistent. I was sporadically working out one day, then maybe another week I'd have two days and I have a week off. And then like, so my training was really inconsistent just, you know, three, four months ago. And the way I started back really being consistent was actually math fit for that exact reason was just to help build that consistency. I'm only doing two exercises mm -hmm. a day and it's getting enough of a stimulus because it's still more total volume in a week than what I was currently doing before that. And that initial starting to build muscle and change my physique was literally just from doing mass 15 before I started to scale it up. Totally. Um, now, as far as diet is concerned for most beginners, this may sound a uh, counter, right? This might sound a little contrary to common knowledge, but most people think, okay, I should uh, just cut my calories, right? Because most people are looking to lose weight. Not necessarily. Uh, we like to, and we found this to be more successful, to add things to someone's diet and do what's called a reverse diet because we're trying to fuel muscle building and muscle growth. Now you're going to gain tons of muscle. Muscle's hard to build. But what that does, just by by moving in that direction, especially if you do it the right way by adding quality protein, is you actually start to speed up your metabolism. That makes fat loss way easier. Like think of it this way right now. If your metabolism was 50% hotter, how much easier would it be to, to get lean, right? That means you don't have to move as much. Your body's burning those calories on its own. So a reverse diet type of an approach where you slowly add calories, especially through high quality protein in conjunction with proper strength training, we'll start to speed that metabolism up so that we get what's called like a, a snowball effect is what I used to refer to it as. Like it starts off slow, but that snowball as it goes down the hill gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, this goes back to the original point that I was trying to make about, you know, if you hit, let's most of these beginners that would choose this beginner pathway are probably trying to reduce body fat or lose weight, right? Mm -hmm. And if you just start moving way more than what you were before, say following one of these programs, right, and reducing calories significantly, in the first couple of weeks, you would see more weight loss on the scale than, say, the person who I tell you on the reverse diet. But fast forward this two months, three months down the road, and the person who did it the right way by reverse dieting first and speeding their metabolism up is going to see fat loss come off significantly faster and then stay off and then also be in a place to maintain where they want to be forever versus the person who just cuts, 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 cuts throughout the gate. And then they're a month away or a month out and their body's plateauing, they're halfway to their goal and they're eating hardly anything. And they're like, F this, yeah. this is not sustainable, That's which right. by the way, you can't go any lower happens to most people when they get in this place. So 100% I'm on board. Like this is this person I'm reverse dieting right now. And even though their goal may be, I want to lose 20 pounds or 30 pounds to look great in that bikini for summer. It's like, okay, that is the plan, but we're first going to reverse diet and put you in a better position metabolically before we start to cut yeah, calories. By the way, if this is like, if you want to lose like 10 pounds, like you're thinking, I just want to lose 10 pounds of body fat. If you do this well, um, oftentimes the scale doesn't move much at all, but you did lose quite a bit of body fat and just gained muscle. And that means you're smaller, by the way. I want to be very clear. Muscle takes up less space per pound than body fat. It's just more dense. So if you lost, let's just say, 10 pounds of body fat but gained 10 pounds of muscle, people would think you lost 20 pounds of, on the scale. Like you're just smaller and that muscle doesn't take up much space, but you look tighter and more uh, sculpted. In fact, I would get clients, uh, that would happen with clients all the time. They'd come to me like, Sal, I know we've only been working out for a couple months. The scale hasn't moved. People keep asking me how much weight I've lost. It's like, well, you did lose body fat. You just gained muscle. Now your metabolism is faster and you're smaller because body fat takes up uh, more space. All right. The next person, uh, the that you know type of person that is trying to get in shape for summer is a person trying to build muscle. 
we're trying to gain some mass. Usually this is a, a, a guy typically, especially a young man or whatever, but I've had female clients. Yeah, I'd put, I'd put like even muscle. like booty gains right here. That's right? muscle building. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So I put booty gains for the bikini in this position. I put hard gainer in this position. I put just somebody in general who has a harder time building muscle and wants to build a muscular physique heading this way. That's I put all those people in this category. Yeah. Now a big, a big um, thing to consider here. And this is somebody that's already been, you know, kind of working out. Obviously, we covered the beginner. So you're already working out and you're like, I just want to build. I want to get into the summer and I want to have more muscle and more shape. Well, the for this kind of person, usually we see big changes in their performance in terms of the results by simply manipulating and utilizing intensity properly. Okay. Intensity is one of the most important factors when it comes to your workouts, it also simultaneously happens to be the one that's the most abused. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have like frequency, like how often you work out, you know, how many days a week are you working out? That would be frequency. Volume would be the total amount of workout exercises and sets and reps that you do. So if you worked out, you know, for an hour, that'd be more volume than if you worked out for, for you know, 20 minutes. So it's volume. And then there's intensity, which is simply how hard the workout is. Well, you know, if you've been working out for a little while, you're trying to build muscle, you probably realized early on that, oh, the harder I work out, the more muscle I build. Uh, but eventually the stops real fast. And then you think, oh, I, I must need to work out harder, which you, you know, you, you work out even harder and then still no results. Oh, I need to just ramp it up even more. And then not only you're not getting results, now you're going backwards. So intensity needs to be utilized properly and manipulated in a way to where we are working with your body's ability to heal, recover, and adapt. We're not just beating the crap out of yourself. If you do this the right way, then we can trigger and amplify muscle growth. If we do this the wrong way, then nothing happens at all. Or worse, you actually start to go backwards. So some piece of advice for people. And, and this actually is now present in one of our most, uh, in, in, in our more recent MAPS program, MAPS Anabolic, which, you know, we actually created uh, after already having the podcast for eight years and interviewing experts and experimenting with more people, is we realized that you can utilize very high intensity training and it will build muscle very quickly so long as you alternate it with less intense, higher volume style workouts right. and throw in some what are called deload weeks. And if you do that magic combination right there, Oh boy, the results happen. Which real fast. really, I mean, it's highlighting the importance of recovering and adapting versus just you know uh, healing and getting into that kind of recovery trap where we're working out so intensively because it's it's showing us results out of the gates because this intensity is really providing your body that that signal and that stimulus. But if we keep on that path of just over intensity, like over and over and over. It just gets to the point where now we're just healing now and we're not really moving the needle forward anymore. So uh, this is just always something that I think most people are going uh, on their fitness journey don't really consider how vital and important the recovery process is with sleep, with nutrition, with also just like undulating your intensity of your workouts. I also think that this person, because we are, we are playing with things like intensity, and and like failure training and stuff like that the thing that complements this is like a like a prime pro type of layout where i have a i have all these exercises that are designed to make sure i keep all my joints moving optimally and healthy mm -hmm. because when you are flirting with things like intensity you are more likely to see the 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 joint pain or the issues like that and so being staying ahead of it, knowing like, oh, you know, I kind of have this rolled shoulder forward. And then also I know that I'm going to be pushing like overhead mm. presses and hitting like in days where I might be taking it to failure. And so knowing that I need to put the work in to make sure that I'm in an advantage, advantageous position to make sure that I don't hurt myself and I get the max benefits for it. So I think having something like that to complement that type of training I think is necessary for this advanced person or, or ideal for this person. Yeah. If you've been working out for a while and you're trying to build muscle mass, you've probably hopefully already figured out that some exercises just build more muscle than others. 
Um, you know, like the bench press, the barbell it's row. usually the more difficult ones. Yeah, the barbell squat, the deadlift, the overhead press, right? Those exercises, just they just build a lot of strength and a lot of muscle in comparison to other exercises that purport to, you know, work the same areas. But then this, then you run into this problem is if this is you and you're trying to build muscle and you're getting stronger and you're pushing intensity by lifting to failure, something starts to hurt. My elbow starts to bother me. I can't deadlift anymore because my, my wrist bothers me or I can't overhead press. My shoulder bothers me or my lower back is starting to get tweaked. Now I can't squat. So now you can't do these incredible muscle building exercises because something hurts, something's bothered you. You got to switch it out for an inferior exercise and maybe you'll still build some muscle, but it ain't happening nearly as fast for this person. You know, but you know, just to compliment what you guys are saying, it's really important to do targeted mobility work targeted for the areas that, you know, you know, are getting stressed quite a bit. So like if you're bench pressing a lot and you're seeing your numbers go up and you start to notice like, oh, my left shoulder starts to feel a little bit funny and I'm starting to lift big weights, but God, I love the bench press. It builds my chest and my shoulders and my triceps really well. Targeted mobility work on that shoulder or targeted mobility work for your particular body type to help with the bench press will keep those numbers moving forward. If you don't do that, your body will literally stop you from getting stronger, either because your central nervous system will say, we're not letting you lift more, we don't feel stable, or worse, you push past that, you overcome your, your central nervous system's kind of you know stopping mechanism and you hurt yourself. Now you're really screwed, now you can't work out at all. So targeted mobility is so important for people tar really trying to build muscle mass because usually that comes along with heavy weights and lots of you know intense strength training. That will stop you in your tracks if you don't address it. You know, back to the intensity thing, for somebody watching right now, when I said alternate, like literally you could do one week for, let's say your back, um, 15 sets where you stop three, th three reps short of failure, you get a good pump. The next week, now you're doing just four sets, but all to failure. You drop the volume, ramped up the intensity, alternating like that. Oh boy, that keeps things uh, moving in the right direction. Do the failure every single week, like a lot of people do. And after about three or four weeks, that's it. You're you're stuck in the mud. Well, and to add back to your your priming and mobility point that you're making, there's at least I don't think you guys do. I know for sure me. There's if I am lifting heavy bench, overhead press, squat, or deadlift, it's mandatory mm -hmm. that I I do certain mobility drills before I go into that, or it's yeah. almost guaranteed <laughs> that yeah. I will hurt or stress something when I do it for sure. It won't get the max out of the lift. I know that like if I try to go cold into one of those things or just do like a warm up set, like some, I know yeah. some coaches just advocate for and then go into it. There's no way I'm getting the most out of that lift or I'm not potentially getting hurt out of that lift. And I know it's equal in terms of like beginner to advanced in terms of like that. But I, I, I can't help but think like the further along I've gone in my career of like lifting weights, like how essential that is now that I've understood that. Like, because you do pay attention to that. You peer into those little inconsistencies even more when you're lifting heavy weights uh, and it pressures it more. And so you, yeah, That's it. I, I very much have had to, um, you know, be humble myself and, and realize like I have to do this in order to maintain the o optimal function of my joints in order to then get any progress uh, going forward. Because it's hard. It gets harder and harder to get progress the longer you're in. Yes. The, the, the bigger and stronger you get, the higher the risk becomes when your form is off just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So to paint it plainly, if you're deadlifting with 100 pounds, and your form is off a little bit versus you're deadlifting with 500 pounds and your form is off just a little bit. Obviously, the risk is going to be much higher with the heavier weight because uh, it's heavier and it's going to stress the joints a little bit differently. Now, if you have perfect form, good stability, good control, you're fine. But when you're off, you're off. So targeted mobility work becomes, it's important for the beginner. It's crucial for the person who's been working out for a long time. Which is, by the way, where the, the whole heavy lifting thing has got a bad rap. Like it has something to do with you know heavy weights. Don't lift heavy because you get hurt or it's bad for no. your joints. Yeah. It's like, no, it's that you- The heavier you lift, the more perfect you if you lift. consider that. Yeah, yeah ex exactly. I mean, I don't, I don't know how you guys treat it, but to me, like let's say it's a day where- it's been a while since I've tried to, you know, train to failure or push it uh, like, you know, singles, doubles or triples. 
I, I, for me, I make this like rule where I have to earn that. And part of earning that is doing this, the, the pre-work going into that. And if I'm not willing to do all my work, then to, you're not going to do it. Then I won't do it. That's right. It's just that simple. If I, Oh, if I'm, Oh, I'm in a hurry. I got to do this. It's like, okay, well then I'm not yeah. training to failure. I'm not, it's not pushing worth the risk. It's not. And, and so the only way that I earn the right to, to lift like that is that I've done all the prerequisites before I go into that. And I've just, learn that over years and years of making the mistake of not doing that. Right. Another thing for people trying to build uh, lots of muscle who have experience is at this point, you're probably somewhat well-versed in some of those pretty awesome exercises, which, which, you know, which is great because they're great exercises, but here's the downside is that, you know, you probably think back to when you were learning how to do a squat. And then there was that beautiful period where, you just seem to get stronger every week and muscle started to build. And then at some point you got real good at it. You've done it for a while. Now adding 15 pounds to the bar is really hard. You can actually somewhat tap into that by doing certain unconventional strength building lifts. And there's some that are out there that for some reason became unpopular that are amazing muscle building exercises. And so I would look into some of these lifts uh, that you probably haven't done before and really tap into some of those, you know, what they call, you know, newbie gains. Um, and they're out there. Like for me, for example, we created a program called map strong, um, you know, uh, years ago. And, uh, I was familiar with a Zercher squat or a Zercher deadlift, never really programmed it in my workouts, but it was part of our program. We were selling it. We were creating. So I started doing them in my routine and uh, it was great. It was like the first time I started to learn how to deadlift. Like at first it took me a while. It was uncomfortable. As I, and then I started getting better with them. And then I was gaining muscle. Like I just started working out. This is my body never done that exercise really for a long period of time. So there's there, exercises out there that are like that. Oh, there's there's two other exercises in that program that, that you didn't even name that I got that from. Snatch grip deadlifts oh, yeah, and good. circus press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those two movements were like, like forgotten movements in my programming yep. forever. Like I didn't even do it till post 10 years into my career. Adding that into my routine, oh my God, the response from that, such great movements. That's why it's, that's one of my favorite programs is because of all the unconventional lifts in there that I think most people don't think to program and they're just super beneficial. Right. Uh, another thing of value with people in this category, and I'm going to be careful when I say this because I know the tendency is to abuse uh, what I'm about to talk about, but if you do it right, they can be pretty awesome. There are advanced training techniques that are out there that bodybuilders and power lifters and Olympic lifters and strength athletes have used that can really amplify results and progress. Now, the key is to use them judiciously. Be very intelligent with how you use them. So an example would be like forced reps um, or negatives or partial reps or using bands for progressive resistance, for example. Like these are all examples of advanced training techniques. If you use them, let's say you pick one and you use it once a week on a specific lift um, or twice a week and, and, you know, maybe on another lift and you do it right, you will see faster muscle building results. If you mess up and you do it too often, you'll go backwards. So uh, just word of note, there are advanced training techniques out there, but you got to use them right. If you use them wrong and you might as well, you're better off not doing them at all. Right. Now, the last person, which is probably 80% of people going into the summer, is they want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. They want to get lean. They want to get cut, shredded, whatever. They want to burn. And they have that. experience right now. And they're consistent, right? right? Yeah, so these I would, are people with some some experience. Yeah, I'd say this probably, uh, this fits 80% maybe the listeners, right? You, most of you that are listening to the podcast probably are lifting in the gym pretty regularly or have been doing it for a while. So you have some yes. experience and, you know, maybe you have already kind of built, a, you know, a little bit of lean lean tissue and metabolism is getting up there already. And now it's like, okay, yeah, let's go um, for the reveal. Yeah, I'm, exactly. It's a reveal time. I've got perfect amount of time getting ready to head mm -hmm. for like, say 4th of July or whatever like that. Now I want to get shredded. Like that's the person I think about when we talk about. These yes. Programs. Now, because this is, uh, <laughs> you know, really falls into that like aesthetic category or looks category. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about training for balance and symmetry in the body, which can have profound visual effects. Okay. Training the body to be balanced. Um, you, you might not see a huge change on the scale, 
but visually when someone looks at you, they'll, they'll notice you'll look a, a lot different, a lot better. And balance can be upper to lower body. That's an obvious one, but it can also be more commonly right to left, right? Is your right arm way stronger than your left arm? Is your right leg way stronger than your left leg? Um, are they as, uh, as fit as each other? Unilateral training. This is where you train one side at a time. Bodybuilders have done this for a long time to improve um, how they look. Training one side at a time and doing it properly can really change how you look, even though the scale might not move much. In fact, we had somebody in our forum, we posted this a long time ago, where she did a DEXA scan and she followed one of our programs that's designed for this called Map Symmetry. I forgot about this. And mm -hmm. th there was a like so much lean body mass on one side versus the other. So a little bit more on her dominant side than the other. And then she followed the program and it did exactly what it was designed to do is it, is it brought up the lagging side and visually it was substantially, it was you crazy. could see it, you know, and it's something that you pick up on uh, subconsciously. You could pick up on symmetry. Yeah. So just something to focus on. If you're getting lean and your goal is to really improve your aesthetics, like try to balance out both sides rather than just drive your body I forward. Wish, I wish I understood this when I was in my 20s. I didn't get this. I totally didn't get this. I think I was like a an, an teenager. Teenage to tw early 20s, um, you know, like you get with many clients who are obsessed with a body part. Oh, I just want to have big arms. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I yeah. just want that big chest. Or oh, I just want to have big legs or a butt. Like we get obsessed with these body parts that we tend to be insecure about or that we in fact were infatuated with. And we want that. And if we only like were to focus more symmetrically on the body, like you'd be so much happier. Mm -hmm. Like I think back to like, for me, it was like arms as a kid. Like that was like this big deal. Like <laughs> I just wanted arms. And so that's all I ever did. And the reality is that even when I l laid off doing arms at the volume that I was doing in my, in my teens and early twenties and started to build a more symmetrical physique, I got more compliments about my arms than I ever did. But yet circumference wise, they were technically an inch plus smaller than what they were when I was training them like crazy, but it's crazy how, what a difference having sculpted shoulders does mm -hmm. for the bicep and the tricep. And the same thing goes for a good balanced quad to hamstring to calf ratio. Like when you train the body symmetrically like that like it will even if you think that you only want one body part is all you yeah. think you care about that one body part will look better when it's balanced with everything it's so else funny how much of a head turner it is for people that are like super symmetrically balanced and like athletic for sure fit looking um uh versus like I, I i remember seeing somebody i've seen on instagram in real life and was just like whoa it just it, you know because there's angles and there's things that can highlight you know those featured body parts and and what people want and versus like in real life and then you see it and it's just like it's so uh it, it takes you a second to kind of put it together it's like it doesn't really fit it's and, rare yeah it's rare to i mean posture and symmetry yeah Though, like, and I, if I see someone, I, I say I always compliment them because I think it's, it's always going to look good. Yeah, it looks when someone stands upright with good posture and they're symmetrically balanced. It's it's I think the most amazing expression of their body or our bodies when 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 done so. Yeah, and so. It's, it's the difference between oh, like muscular versus oh, that's a beautiful body. Like, right. Bodybuilders have understood this for a long time. I mean, they know they've learned for a long time that they don't just get judged on overdeveloped body parts, but rather how it all flows and looks together mm -hmm. and training for that um, makes a very big difference. And again, if you're trying to get cut, you're probably interested and in, you want to look a particular way. Don't ignore this. This makes a very big difference in, uh, in your appearance. Um, the other thing is uh, to bring up balance is to bring up body parts that may be just specifically lagging uh, for yourself. Now, you know, I want everybody has this, by the way, everybody has a body part that they're, not happy with. I don't care who you talk to if they've been working out for a while and you say, you know, how's your workouts going? What do you like? What do you don't like? Everybody's like, oh, I have, it's my butt or it's my, the back of my shoulders or it's my back or whatever, right? They have that one body part. Here's a mistake people make. They add volume to that body part, more exercises, more sets and more reps, and they do nothing else with yeah. the rest of the body right. or they train it with more volume with the same intensity. Yeah. And so they just end up beating the crap out of this body part, overtraining yeah. it and actually cause it 
to to not just not progress, but to actually regress. Or also developing the ones that are already overdeveloped in comparison to that. And so even though you they bring keep it the ratio, yeah, the, the ratio same. stays the yeah. same. So you, <laughs> you you bring up that one body part, but then the rest of them came up too. Yeah, so. there's, a, there's a smart way to bring up a lagging body part. And usually you reduce volume from other areas or you add volume to that weak body part, but you do so in a lower intensity with different exercises. So you're not just overcoming your body's ability to adapt and recover, you're actually bringing that uh, that body part uh, up. Yep. Um, now, another part, and here's where I want to get real careful, <clears throat> is, you know, the calorie burn of your workout, we've talked about this many times on the show, it's not the most important thing. What's more important is that you speed up your metabolism. Uh, it's more important that you eat a particular way. We'll get to diet, uh, of course, because these are people who want to lose weight. But in a short period of time, let's say an eight-week period of time, you can make some pretty profound changes by burning more calories in your workout, but you got to do it the right way. Because if you do this the wrong way, what'll happen is your body will actually reduce muscle mm -hmm. to keep you from burning too many calories. Remember, your body's always trying to keep itself in balance. So what's real popular for this is usually high intensity interval training, right? Hit training. Because studies show it burns so many calories. Oh my God, 30 minutes a hit. It's like doing two hours of other exercise. That's true, but it's not just a mishmash of exercises. If you really want this to be effective, it needs to be strength training hit workouts. Strength training hit workouts that are well programmed will burn a ton of calories, will get you lean faster in a short period of time, but you won't lose muscle. So if I were to structure this, the way it would look for me personally is a more, you know, symmetry slash aesthetic type of programming. And then and and carb cycling while I'm heading into summertime. Oh, for the diet. And yeah. then the last finish two, it up with hit. Yeah. And then yeah, the last two to four weeks is hit, and I would start to reduce calories as I slowly go down. And the way I would reduce it is through carb cycling. So I would mm. carb cycle, let the lower carb days be the natural lower calorie days. Let the you know maintenance the surplus days be the little bit higher calorie days. And then as I start to get closer and closer to the end of the, you know, or whenever the time I'm trying to peak or look my best, if I have vacation or 4th of July or whatever, is when I'm going to ramp up and introduce the the hit for those last couple. Now, carb weeks. cycling is, uh, that was popularized by bodybuilders, but now lots of people are catching on. When you cut your calories, uh, calories are going to come from proteins, fats, or carbohydrates. Those are the, the three places you'll get calories from. Uh, proteins and fats are essential. So you have to eat a certain amount of them. You have to, absolutely have to. Your body cannot create essential fatty acids. It cannot create essential amino acids, but your body actually technically doesn't need carbohydrates. Now I'm not advocating you never eat carbs again. Um, I don't think that's a very well balanced approach that also has its own negatives, but you could survive without carbs. So when cutting calories and also simultaneously try to give yourself enough energy for your workouts and simultaneously trying to not lose any muscle, it makes sense. And this is uh, again, why bodybuilders did this makes sense to cycle your carbs, cut your carbs when you cut your calories, raise them a little bit when you need the energy for particular types of workouts. And the data shows that this actually has some merit. People have better workouts and psychologically the diet doesn't feel um, as, uh, as, as difficult. They feel more satisfied and they get better results. And, it, and look, I've done it all. And personally, this for me is the best way uh, to get lean. It's just, it's the easiest. It feels the best. And I still have decent workouts. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, I think there's more to that too. And you, you kind of alluded to it with the, uh, the essential, you know, your fats and, and protein is essential. And in my experience, almost any time I assess, like when you assess the diet, when you're not telling people what to do and like, what are they doing? Almost everybody was under consuming healthy fats or definitely under consuming protein. So the idea that when you would go into this restrictive part of a diet to lean out, to potentially cut the two things that you already are probably low on is not a good strategy. Right. So I've always loved utilizing carb cycling or some form of that with clients when it comes to reducing body fat, unless I had, they have some sort of special condition or, or autoimmune issue where I'd put them on a different type of a diet. But for most people, I think it's one of the best strategies to lean somebody out for that exact reason that most people don't hit their protein and healthy fats on a regular basis. And so why would I put you on a calorie restricted diet where I pull that out when it's something you're not consistently doing? I just got you consistently eating that. Now I'm going to pull that away. No, I'd rather pull something like carbohydrates that aren't necessary. So for we can us. get those fats and proteins. Yeah. hundred percent. All right. So Here's what we did for those of you that want it to be very specific. Written out, you know exactly what to do. 
each day, each week, and you have help along the way. We took and we put together three bundles for the three types of people we talked about. The beginner, the person who wants to you know, build muscle and strength, and the person who wants to get leaner. What we did is we took the programs that are best suited for all of those. We put them in bundles, and then we discounted them tremendously. So you have the summer starter bundle, which is for beginners, the summer shred bundle, which is for those people who want to burn body fat for summer, and the summer strong bundle for people trying to build muscle uh, and build strength uh, for the summer. All of them, again, combination of programs with eBooks to help with every single thing that we talked about and be specific, specific, tell you exactly what to do, reps, sets, form, everything. And the discounts are massive. Like you're going to save more than half off the regular price. So if you're interested in any of those and you want that help, go to mapsapril.com. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was hardest. for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 